Hey all, Steve here from Supreme Leader Caravans. Uh, what we've decided to do is actually film a handover video. So we're going to film it here on this 21 foot 6 uh, gold alley leader. Uh, it's a bunk van, so I know there's a lot of bunk vans getting around now. Uh, but all the features inside the van are transferable between a Supreme, a leader, bunk, two person, etc. etc. So we'll start from the front and we'll do each. Uh, feature I suppose in a little clip so you can always refer back to it and uh, watch it over and over and uh, familiarize yourself with your new van. Okay so first off we're going to do our A-frame setup so I'm going to do it all at once uh, so you can uh, watch the whole video rather than doing little small ones. Uh, so right here you're coupling very easy uh, this one here is a 50mm ball so to lock it in lock straight straight on your um, on your ball Always give it a pull up, make sure it's locked on because you don't want it to jump off, as we all know. Now, this over here, this is the bungee cord for the brake safe. So you want to connect this to your car, but not to your D-shackles on your car or to your tow bar. It's actually got to be fitted to the actual car. Um, that way, if your van and your car come apart, heaven forbid, that'll pull out and apply the brakes on the van. Handbrake, nice and easy. We run a, a handbrake similar to a, a car. Pull up to lock, push down to turn it off. Uh, make sure while you're traveling that your handbrake is down and your cables are out of the way of the handbrake handle. Now, we've also got our 12 pin. So this is standard for all our caravans. This will run your fridge and your brake safe through it, as well as your standard trailer wiring, so your indicators, clearance lights, stuff like that. Uh, we also run an Anderson plug. Now this will charge the battery only. Uh, it's not a necessity, but we recommend that you have it. That way, while you're driving, your battery will charge. Now, if you have a reverse camera, you will have this little guy there. Uh, we'll also give you the um, wiring for your car. If you bought a uh, van with a reverse camera, so have that installed uh, and then it just plugs in and everything should work perfectly. Now if you've got Elco ele uh, electronic stability control, you're going to need another red Anderson to run that. Now all of this is available inside your welcome pack. So it's got everything in there for you to have a look at. Uh, now, very important, your chassis plate. So this is from uh, Road King chassis. This will have what the chassis is rated to. So in this instance it's 3200 kilos. It'll also have your VIN number that you'll need for insurance purposes, uh, identification of the actual unit. And then your chassis number. So this number here is, I suppose, your identification for us as a manufacturer. So if you ever, ever ring up, use this number um, and we'll be able to look up all your R5 documents. Uh, very easy. Trans. Now you got a handy little hooks here for your chains. Um, when hooking up to your car, make sure you cross the train uh, chains. Again, this is if in the event that this pops off. The whole idea of crossing it is that the chains are going to catch the, the coupling and the coupling is not going to fall on the floor. Good idea too is always keep your chains tucked up on the hooks when not in use. That way they're not sitting in puddle of water um, and deteriorating. Now up here is your gas bottles. So nice and easy, quick release. Opens right up, you can pull them out. Uh, I'd recommend putting a lock on that, it keeps the honest people out. Uh, up here too, you've got your, um, your quick select between bottles. So you can leave them both hooked in and you can just flick between bottles like this very easily. Lastly here we've got your tap. Now this is actually where you plug your water in. Uh, we put it on the onside so you can keep an eye on it. It's got a one way valve so the water won't come back through. But you've also got a tap here that you can pressurise through your um, water pump. Now if you plugged into mains, don't need to use your water pump. It's got mains pressure flowing through the van. 
over here too, it will not fill the water tanks. You must fill your water tanks with the water fillers on the offside. This is just for mains pressure water. Now we're onto the front boot. So if your van doesn't have a front boot, don't worry, we will do another video with it. But for those of you who do have a front boot, inside you will find your awning, uh, we call it an awning puller, but it's an awning arm puller. So what that does is, I'll show you when I do the awning, but it actually helps you pull it down because the awnings are quite high. Uh, you've also got your uh, leg winders, so I'll show you that as well when I do the legs. Your tire iron, so very self-explanatory if you get a, a flat, it's all located in here. Now, in here as well is your gas certification plate. So if you ever need to reference that, especially in New South Wales, um, they're pretty strict on that I believe. It's in here for you. You will get your uh, uh, certificates of electrical, plumbing and gas as well inside your van. Um, but you can also look here. Now this plate over here is your VIN plate. So just like the VIN on the uh, chassis, you'll have another one here, same one. It's just referenced a couple times on the van. But this will also uh, show your weights, when your van was built, tyre sizes, um, and also what model and, and brand you bought. So, litre gold, for instance, VIN number, date of manufacture, 10th of the 3rd, 2020, so on and so forth. You will need this as well for insurance. Now, over here is your charging system. So, again, in a front boot, charging system will be here, no front boot will be in your tunnel boot and we'll show you that in another video. This is your brake safe. So this is what we were talking about before, if the van and the car come apart, this unit here will apply the brakes on the van and slow it down. To uh, monitor it, you just push that in and it will show green light if the battery is at normal. If I push that in and the red light stays on, the battery is low and needs to be charged. Now, the battery in here is not charged from this battery charger. It's either charged from your car whilst driving, or if you plug a battery charger onto these terminals. So just keep that in mind. If you've got your van in storage for a while, check the back, uh, brake safe. If it's low, either run your car for a little bit, get it, get it topped up, or get an auxiliary battery um, charger and plug it on there and give it a quick charge. Over here is your battery charger. Now it's plugged into a power point just on the side there. Make sure the power point is on. So when you plug it into 240 volt, um, the battery's gonna uh, flick on. It's also got a, uh, a switch. Here it is. So it's, the switch is either gonna be underneath or up top make sure that's on as well. A lot of customers will put stuff inside here and accidentally knock the switch and then the battery won't charge and they give us a call, which is fine. But always check switches, make sure everything's on. Now, battery charger, you can just let it do its thing. Every time you plug into 240 volt, if the switch on the battery charger and the power point's on, it'll just keep charging and it'll float in and out as the battery gets topped up. All right, folks, we're on to the water fillers. Now, just before I get to that, there's two things here that I want to show you as well. Uh, right here is your hot water system. So, we've got switches inside that will actually control it from gas to electricity. So, you don't really have to worry too much about it outside. However, if you do need to get into it at any time, two screws. It is hinged on the other side, so it will open up and you can get to it. Now, it's a stainless steel tank as well. Uh, keep in mind there is an anode in there. However, because it's stainless steel, it's not going to wear out as, as quickly as a, a steel tank would. Now, over here is your external shower. Now, some vans will have it, some won't. Uh, our van is generally always on the offside of the external shower. So, to use it, grab your keys, just the little ones, open it up, and what you'll find inside is a shower head. Got to push the button down to use it. Hot and cold taps. Now, one thing that you should always remember is make sure those taps are off because if you leave your water um, water pump on and you're free camping, if the taps are open slightly, it's gonna dribble and you're gonna lose all your water. So, really good practice to always check these before you take off um, or 
constantly while you're camping. Inside here as well is shower head holders that if you wanted to, you could mount up here. We don't from manufacturing, but it's up to you. You've got a couple in there. Two folded in, wind it up. Now the water fillers, if they are spinning like this, this means they are locked and you'll never get that cap out. So don't keep spinning or trying to unscrew it because they're locked. These two bigger keys in your pile are your water fillers. So put them in, spin, and you see it doesn't spin anymore. Now, one thing to notice is, or note, with these water fillers is when they're new, they've got a rubber seal inside. It's very tight. So to, uh, to loosen them, you gotta push in and then spin. And you'll notice it's got three locking pins and this rubber seal, which is fairly tight. So just remember to push and spin. Good practice as well. Always keep your water fillers locked while camping. Again, just keeps the Get some people out from touching your water sources. Okie dokie, so up this area of the van is generally where your fridge is, so you can tell by this bottom fridge van here. Up the rear is also your uh, 240 volt plug-in, so as you can see this van's plugged in. It is a 15 amp plug-in point, so normal households won't have a 15 amp plug-in point. So what you can do is either get a 15 amp install, Otherwise, you can get an adapter from, I think Bunnings have them. Uh, we've got some too. That um, goes from a 10 amp to a 15 amp plug. So, make sure you plug in at it every time or every camp you can. Um, keeps the batteries topped up. Also, you can run your fridge, uh, your hot water system, aircon, microwave, etc., etc. Now, one thing to note as well here is your fridge venting. So, we don't have the traditional two vents on the side, and you've probably told this in the time of sale, but uh, we've actually got one down the bottom here with a 100ml duct that runs up the back of the fridge, and then all the hot air escapes through the top. So, there is a fridge fan in here that is controlled from up in the control box, which I'll show you in another video. You generally only use that fan when it's a very hot and still day. If there's a bit of wind around, um, it's not really necessary to use it because the wind is pushing all the air through. Um, one thing is you don't want to block this vent off uh, because this is where the, the cold air comes in and pushes the hot air out. Another thing you um, up here is your gas uh, venting. So you do not want to block this gas vent off either because that's where the gas from the fridge is expelled. Okay, so this is what we call the on side of the van or the awning side. It can also be called the curb side of the van. Uh, on this side you will have your picnic table. Very easy. Opens up, closes as well. This does have a load limit. I believe it's 30 kilos. Um, there will be a picnic table book though inside your van that you can check on it. It also has a light in here too, as you can see. Again, when you're storing the van or you're camping, let's say you go out for the day, just make sure the little lights like that are turned off, otherwise you're gonna be using power, if you're free camping especially, um, that you don't need to use. Uh, folds away nice and easy. Make sure these pop back up, that means they're locked inside the frame, and the picnic table won't open while you're driving. All right, now, this hatch right here is your toilet cassette. Just keep in mind, folks, that um, this is a bunk van, so the ensuite is running on the onside of the van. Normal two berth vans will generally have the ensuite on the rear, which means the, uh, the toilet cassette will be on the offside. So just find your hatch, become custom with it. You will have keys for it. Find out which one they are, um, and maybe keep it locked as well, because funnily, funnily enough, people actually steal these because they want a couple. <laughs> so, hang on to it, look after it. So, to release it, you lift the handle up. It's on wheels, so it'll just slide right out. There is a uh, cap for here. It is in the bowl with a starter kit of chemicals. 
So keep it closed up. Now it does have a bit of a, uh, an arm there so you don't have to carry it on your person. You can actually wheel it. Now keep in mind you've got to dump this in a dump point, not just into a toilet. Um, some parks and stuff get really narky about that. Um, now to empty it, swing this around, push the button and tip out. As I said, you get a starter kit of chemicals which will break down the solids, otherwise any camping store, our parts store, have sachets, liquids, whatever you like. Um, with the, the cassette as well, the, the toilet, you don't want to force it. So if I was to try to pull this cassette out and it wasn't coming out, that probably means someone's using the toilet and they've opened the flap. So if the flap is open, this cassette won't come out. Now, now that the cassette is out, if someone went to use that toilet, the flap wouldn't open. So if you've ever got a bit of resistance with the cassette, don't force it, go have a look inside, make sure there's nothing else going on. And when you slide it back in, make sure your hose and your wiring is out of the way. Very easy, find the wheel tracks, push it in, and lock it straight back down. As I said earlier, keep that locked up, keeps the honest people away. Next hatch on this side, again, this is a feature, so not all vans will have it, but if you do have it, this is your entertainment. Uh, hatch or TV box. So this piece of the TV arm is generally on the back of your telly. Uh, it's the same telly arm that's inside. So the whole idea is you can s slide the telly out from the inside and then slide it on to this one outside. Inside this hatch you'll also find a telly point, 240 volt plug and 12 volt for the telly. You've also got your RCA leads so you can place around sound through the DVD or play a DVD player outside here through your speakers. Now, don't travel with the telly on the arm. It's always safer to take it off and maybe tuck it up on the main bed underneath the pillows. Um, always pack your arms away and again, keep it locked. On the side as well, on the offside, near the picnic table will always be a 240 volt uh, plug, 12 volt, and potentially USB depending on your model of caravan. Now onto the door. So the door key will be one of the bronze keys. If you've got a front boot, you will get two bronze keys. Uh, find out which one the front door is. If you don't have a front boot, you'll get one bronze key, and that is your, your door. Now this little handle here is how you open but when you lock it you'll notice it retreats in there if this was locked and i pulled that up and try to open i'll actually snap that handle and it won't open you have to make sure before pulling that handle that the key lifts it up and that will open it up now with with the door as well you have a triple locking door when you close the door, you want to make sure that all three locks close properly. You don't want to lock a door with one of the locks out because it will jam it. It's pretty hard to get in or out of the caravan. So I always give it a bit of a slam and I just like to give it a three. Touch. Lock and you know it's locked. Open it up. And just by lifting this handle, the door will separate. This is a security screen, as you can see, so you can lock this up and leave this half of the door open and you'll still be protected. Okay, now we are looking at what we like to call the mains cupboard. Uh, it'll be in one of your overheads, generally on the end of the bank of overheads, uh, either on the awning side or the uh, road side. Now inside this um, overhead you will find your hot water system electric switch, uh, your hot water system gas switch, your fridge fan, water pump. This is your mains 12 volt on and off. So if I flick this, all 12 volt is turned off, including the fridge. Please keep that in mind. So when you're storing your van or you go out for the day, a lot of people turn this off, come back, and everything in their freezer is defrosted. 
So, got to keep this on, and then you can turn all the lights off if you want to turn lights off um, once you go out for the day or whatever. Now, uh, radio. So this is a stereo, uh, FM, AM, CD, auxiliary, USB. A few of them have Bluetooth capabilities as well. Um, we got about four or five maybe different uh, head units, so whatever one you get, make sure you just read the booklet. It's very similar to a car stereo, uh, nice and easy. Uh, you can fade the um, speakers in and out, so that'll be on the fade mode, not the balance mode. Balance mode will go left and right, fade will go in and out. Uh, but yeah, definitely worth reading up on. This will play DVDs as well, so that will play through that RCA leads I showed you in the entertainment hatch, and it'll also play through the internal kit, um, internal telly, which I will show you in another video. In here as well is your solar controller. Now, very similar to the um, 240 volt charger, it's kind of a set and forget, I suppose. It does its own thing. It will show you what's happening. So right now we are using five amps worth of load. Um, it'll tell you what we're bringing in voltage wise. It'll also tell you the health of your batteries. Uh, pretty cool little feature is it's got two USBs there too. So let's say you're listening to music. You can plug your USB in there. Leave your phone in here and just play the tunes. Um, but yeah, worth reading up on. I myself when I go camping I kind of leave it to do its thing. Uh, it's going to bring in the solar when there's solar to bring in. It's going to monitor the, the battery. Uh, the only time I'm really concerned about it is if the battery voltage is dropping to about 11.7 then I'll be concerned and I'll, I'll look further into it. Now good practice uh, is just to check it once a day, generally in the morning I'd say. Check it in the morning see that your batteries are okay um, and still in the 12 volt or higher area. If you're sort of dropping down there maybe think about turning everything off and doing some fault finding uh, and that's your mains covered. Okay, so there's a bit of uh, electrics happening here. I just want to explain it for you folks. This here is TV stuff. So it won't necessarily be near here or here. It'll be anywhere in the van depending on layout. Now I'll just explain each one. This is the RCA leads. We were talking about the telly before in the entertainment hatch. This over here um, is what your DVDs will play through and uh, your surround sound through your speakers internally. Uh, this is a 240 volt plug-in for the whatever you want, but for the telly, if you're plugged in. This here is your 12 volt cigarette socket plug-in, your antenna plug-in, and this here is a booster. So whenever you're using the telly, turn it on. It'll boost the signal um, and you get a better range on your wine guard. This one over here is what we call an explorer plug. Essentially what it is, is just a straight through wall plug that if you were to carry a portable satellite system or you go to a caravan park that has their own antenna plug-ins you take your telly out of there plug it in here and then from the outside you plug your satellite system in or the the, the caravan park antenna plug-in right now this over here this is your 240 volt cutout so safety switch and then a lockout as well uh, you have to have both of these by law not just a safety switch you've got to have a lockout on it too uh, what that's for is if someone needs to work on the 240 volt system, you can essentially lock it out and it won't turn on. Um, good practice too is maybe before you go on a trip, you just want to make sure your safety switch is working well. So if you're plugged into 240 volt, push that and it'll trip it. If it doesn't trip, there's something wrong and you want to get that replaced because this will save in the event of a fault. Now, a lot of customers to me might ring me up and say, see, none of my 240 volt is working, my aircon's not working, etc. And I run them through uh, a few steps, and one of the steps is this. Every now and then, you could get a surge current, or you could be drawing too much current. So if you had your aircon on, um, a kettle, a hairdryer, it's only 15 amps in the caravan. So you've got to be mindful of not using high powered electronics all at the same time. So if for any reason you don't have any 240 volt electricity, check this. It's one of the first steps. Check this, make sure it hasn't tripped, then go to your caravan park uh, plug-in or your generator, make sure that hasn't tripped either. 
anything on that, you want to start making some phone calls. Um, up here, this is your um, fuse panel. Now, it's all numbered uh, in your electrical book that you get on handover or delivery. It'll tell you what each one does. If it trips, these fuses will actually pop out. And what you want to do then is just push it back in. It's a resettable fuse. You push them back in um, and it'll, it should fire back up. If not, there's a fault somewhere and you want to look a bit further into it. Um, most of these are 10 amps with uh, a couple 15s and 20s. Always a great idea to carry spare fuses, blade fuses, glass fuses, etc. Because when you camp in, the last thing you want to do is lose power and not be able to fix it quickly. Uh, so, worth giving your electrical book a read as well, because that will tell you everything about here. Um, and then you'll also be able to diagnose which part of the caravan has a fault in it. Uh, touching on the antenna now, so you wind it up from the inside. Um, this is the antenna winder here. As it says, you've got to lubricate the gears twice a year. Um, probably something you can get done at service. Um, rather than doing yourself, but if you are handy, go ahead. Um, you see these two little arrows here. When winding it down, these arrows need to be lined up. So, antenna's down at the moment, so I'm going to follow the arrows, and it says this way for up. So I'm going to wind all the way up until it stops. There you go. And then if I'm trying to get um, antenna reception, I can actually pull this down and move the antenna above until I can find reception but as I said when you want to bring it down you've got to line these two arrows up and then follow the arrow going down that way the antenna comes down in the safe position locks down and you're right folks I just want to touch on a couple of 240 volt appliances um, that's just good to know things that only work on 240 volt so 12 volt is not going to run it and gas is not going to run these three things. Now the three things are your microwave, your air conditioner, and if you have one, your washing machine. Now your microwave, most times is located above the fridge. This one's not because there's a wheel box running through, so it's okay if it's up in this overhead. Um, now all three of these appliances is worth reading the book um, on them. You'll learn how to cycle between modes, all kinds of stuff. Um, Microwave, aircon, washing machine, 240 volt appliances only. Keep in mind. Next up, we got our full oven and cooktop. Now, depending on what model you have, will depend on whether you have a recessed cooktop like this one with this bench top that continues right through. Um, regardless of whether you have the bench top or not, you are going to have this lid. Now, the lid's got a safety latch over here, so it won't open while traveling, so just make sure you bend the latch back and it'll open up. Um, all our vans are standard with a three gas, one electric cooktop. You may have opted for the four gas, in that case you won't have the element, um, of course. Now, it's the same startup as a household cooktop. Now, I won't start it up now, this is brand new stock unit straight out of the factory so there's no gas in the, the bottles, but it literally is a push in and ignite. So, in, ignite, and it'll ignite. Now you need to hold the gas in for a number of seconds, safety feature, um, it'll go out uh, if you don't hold it in for long enough, but you, you'll see that. Now, if you've got the three gas, one electric cooktop, the element will be the only thing that runs off 240 volt. The griller and the oven are all gas as well, so just keep that in mind. Now, generally near your cooktop will always be your water tank gauges as well. That'll tell you how much you're running at uh, water-wise. If you have grey water installed, you will have another gauge uh, that you can check. And then depending on what model, you might have them up over here with an LCD screen. Folks, I just want to touch on one of the table legs that we have uh, in uh, a lot of our caravans. It's a very popular table leg and it's designed to be made another bed. So if you've got a big club lounge or an L shape, uh, you can opt for a Nova Mapper table and make another bed out of it essentially. So, it's a hydraulic table leg. It's also got a trigger here. So we'll mount this trigger for you before we pick the caravan up. Um, and what it's designed to do is spin right around 
and then also slide north, south, east, west. Now, as well as that, we've got a little button on the bottom here of the table leg. This button will actually drop it to become the bed. So, if you wanted to do that, take out the cushions from your seating, stand on that, and actually push it down. When it gets to its desired length, it'll actually lock, and you can put your tick cushion in and make your bed. After that, you push it, push down, and it'll come back up again. Now, just touching on the tunnel boot, all our caravans will have a tunnel boot. Um, and depending on where your hot water system is will depend on whether you have a full tunnel boot or a three-quarter tunnel boot. Now, if you don't have a front boot and you only have a tunnel boot, as I said earlier in another video, your electrics will be mounted in here. So same panel as what we use in all our vans, just located in a different area. So this is your battery charger. There's that power point I was talking about. Always make sure it's on. Um, and what you also find up here is your VIN plate, your gas plate, exactly as you would in a front boot model van. Now, if you don't have the front boot as well, this is where you'll have your awning arm or your awning puller that we were talking about, uh, your tire iron and your, your leg winder, all located on here, screwed very nicely, but this is where all your gear will be. So just get familiar with your van, whether you have a front boot or a tunnel boot. All right, now on to chassis components. So, stabilizing legs. With these stabilizing legs, you want to rem remember that they are stabilizing legs, not legs to lift the whole caravan up. So if you do get a flat, don't try to lift it up with this. You do have jacking points, which I will show you, um, and that's the safest way to change a tire, not with these. Now, these legs have a few different modes of where you can actually lock them in. So no matter what terrain you're on, you're always going to be able to drop them. It's always better to have them straight if you can. If not, it's perfectly fine to have them on an angle. Now, straight down, you get your leg winder, put it on the nut in the middle of the leg and wind it down. Now, as I said, you don't want to go too hard, so you just get it tight and that'll be enough. What that'll do is when you're camping, your van's not going to bounce around and feel like you're on water. It's going to be nice and level, nice and sturdy, um, and make for a much better camping experience. Make sure you drop all four legs, tighten them up, don't tighten them too tight, um, and that'll, that'll be enough. Now, one thing I wanted to say as well is, when you're packing up and you're lifting your legs up, make sure that you always angle them backwards. Don't do them forwards, because if you're driving along and these pins unlock, that leg's gonna drop down and it's gonna cause some Bit some big damage. So always legs to the back so if the pins do let go it's just going to bounce, flop around. Alright so a standard feature of ours on all our caravans is not only the Anderson plug on the um, coupling uh, or the A-frame there, we actually put another one here next to the, the where the A-frame meets the chassis. Uh, now this Anderson plug is designed for two things. You can actually plug a portable solar panel in and move it around the van and chase the sun. Because as we know, while we're camping, normally camp underneath shade and the solar panels on our roof aren't getting any uh, juice, you've got this option here too. Now, you can also plug in a, a portable fridge or something like that if you want to use it as an outlet. Now, there's two places that you may have your batteries, which is on the chassis rails like this or in the front boot. Either place you have is completely fine. One thing to remember though is on the batteries, you will have a couple fuses that do a few different things. So if you've lost power to a certain part of the van um, and you can't find it in that fuse panel that we were talking about, always go and check your batteries, make sure the blade fuses there are not popped. If they are, carry some spares with you and replace them. All right, again, chassis components. now. This cylinder here, which is at the rear of the axles, that is your jacking point if you need to change a spare tyre, uh, flat tyre, or change wheels for any, any reason. Now, supplied with each of our caravans is a bottle jack. Now, this is a pro proper hydraulic bottle jack. It's also got different neck attachments, which slide into this jacking point. So, make sure you jack off the jacking points. So that'll stop the jack falling out if you're on uneven uh, ground. Um, 
and make sure you find where your bottle jack is and, and keep it in an accessible place. Don't, don't have it hidden all the way back, uh, you know, in the front boot or tunnel boot all the way at the back of items. All right, folks, so we are standing next to a Territory, which is uh, the off-road model in the Supreme. So what we have here is the grey water outlet. Um, what you'll notice is this has got a grey water tank. It's got protective sheathing to the PVC pipes and it's got a check plate guard over the uh, water tank. So depending on what model you have, you will potentially have these features or not. One feature you will always have is your grey water coming out the offside of the caravan. So if we're just talking about a normal van, a semi off road van, caravan park van, stuff like that, you're just going to have a grey water outlet um, that you need to screw a hose onto and run it to the, the drain in the caravan park. Or if you've added a grey water tank or your model comes standard with it, you will have this valve here which you can turn and store all your water. Um, until you can get to a dump point and actually dump it. All right, just touching on the wheels and, and tires here, folks. These are all supplied by Bob Jane. As a lot of you know, we've teamed up with Bob Jane T-Marks um, and then now uh, our sole supplier of uh, tires and, and wheels. So if you do have any dramas, um, you can contact us, of course. However, you do have the support of Bob Jane's 140 stores around Australia to do with tyres, um, you'll also get a bit of money back on your, your tow vehicle uh, for having a Supreme Leader. Uh, but it is a bit of surety there, uh, knowing that you've got two big companies teamed up together and the support of two companies. So just remember, Bob Jane, if you need anything. All right, folks, just, uh, just a couple of things that you should always check on when you take off on a trip, um, or even tow the van at all, is your tyre pressures and your wheel nuts. These two things you need to check. This is the running gear of your van. You always want to make sure it's tip top. So, wheel nuts should always be tightened to 110 Newton meters of torque. Um, try them all. Big, long corrugated roads, you know, big trips like that might loosen things. So, you want to check that every morning before you tow. The tyres themselves, uh, you want to be running pressures anywhere between 40 and 50 depending on what tyre you have, right? Um, as I said in an earlier video, you've got Bob Jane's um, help for all running gear if you need. Otherwise, feel free to get in contact with us if you have any questions. Now, uh, while you are hitting dirt roads, corrugations, national parks, all kind of roads like that, that are, you know, bumpy, rocky, what you want to do is you want to drop your tyre pressures and you want to drive to your conditions. So, you don't want to be hitting corrugations at 110 kilometres with 50 psi in your tyres because you're going to do damage. Um, so, generally start by releasing about 20% of, of tyre pressure. That's just something I do. Um, start with the 20%. All that does is takes the real big bumps out of the, um, the suspension and, and the tyre. Um, and it allows the tyre to compress a lot more. Um, if you do need to though, feel free to drop more tyre pressure um, and just take it nice and easy if you're on a very rough terrain road. All right, just touching on the rear bar system here. So this is generally where your spare tyre will be. Um, in some cases, you might have it underslung underneath the van. Otherwise, on an H-frame on the front of the van. Um, completely up to you guys. Now, as I said before, Bob Jones supplied uh, tyres and rims. They are mounted on the back like this one for now. Um, that back bar system, because we run four arms, you can put 120 kilos on it. Now, a couple of things to note is this over here is your license plate um, light there and where the license plate goes. It can't be higher than 1300 um, and you can't obstruct that in any way. So you couldn't actually really move that spare tire over it because you'd be obstructing it, get in trouble. Uh, another thing to note is jerry can holders that go on the rear, you can't put fuel in them. You're only allowed to put water in them. So keep that in mind. Um, but nonetheless, 120 kilo load limit on there. So you could put two spares, jerry cans, toolbox, pole carriers, whatever you want. Um, you do have the freedom to do it. Uh, on selected models, you will have what we call a gas bayonet point. Um, 
Not all of them have them, but you could add it, or a lot of the uh, models do come standard with them. Um, what you will notice though is where we put the gas point is always near the front awning arm. The idea of that is when you have the lead coming out, you could cook inside the awning or outside. Um, you can't have gas directly in the middle of the awning, um, gas regulations. So that's why we put it near the awning arm so you can cook outside of the awning um, and then if it starts raining you can finish up your, your food inside. But yeah, here is a gas bayonet, very similar to a bayonet uh, bulb fitting in, twists and comes and locks in. Um, if you do have a gas bayonet, uh, we will supply you with a uh, gas hose um, on selected models, otherwise it is available in our parts store. Hey guys, thanks for watching the handover video. If there's anything you want to see more about, please get in contact with us. Uh, you can send an email to contact us at australiancaravancenter.com.au uh, You can call us or you can leave uh, comments on our YouTube channel if there's anything you haven't seen uh, but want to watch, keep in mind we have YouTube channels um, that you can go to, leave comments on and there's a lot of photos on there too. Um, but otherwise, get out there, enjoy your vans and have a safe and wonderful holiday.